Hello friends, this is Samarth and welcome to my YouTube channel that is Love for Anatomy. And today we are going to discuss about a very important topic that is the lymphatic drainage of the breast. But before we start with this topic, I would request you guys to please take a look at my previous videos as well. Now, let's start with the lymphatic drainage of the breast. We will discuss the lymphatic drainage of the breast in two sections. First, we will discuss about the lymph nodes into which the lymph from the breast drains and the lymphatic vessels which connect these various lymph nodes. Now firstly let us discuss about the lymph nodes into which the lymph from the breast drains. First we have the axillary group of lymph nodes. There are total five group of axillary lymph nodes and those are the anterior or the pectoral group of lymph nodes, the posterior group of lymph nodes, then we have the lateral and the central group of lymph nodes. And finally we have the apical group of lymph nodes. Out of these five groups, the maximum amount of lymph is drained into the anterior or the pectoral group of the axillary group of lymph nodes. Lymph could drain in these group of lymph nodes either directly or indirectly. The next group of lymph nodes we have the anterior thoracic or the parastellar lymph nodes. These lymph nodes are also referred to as the internal memory lymph nodes. Now let us locate the axillary lymph nodes and the anterior thoracic or the parastellar lymph nodes in, with the help of this diagram. As you guys could see this right here is the anterior group of lymph nodes of the axillary lymph nodes. This right here is the central group. This is the posterior, lateral and finally the apical group of lymph nodes. This right here are the parasternal or the internal memory or the lymph nodes of the anterior thoracic region. The lymph from the breast drains into these lymph nodes either directly or indirectly. Next we have few other lymph nodes. We have the supraclavicular lymph nodes, the cephalic which is also known as the deltopectoral lymph nodes and finally we have the posterior intercostal lymph nodes. Then we have two lymph plexuses as well. Some amount of lymph from the breast also drain into these lymph plexuses and those are known as the subdiaphragmatic lymph plexus and the subperitoneal lymph plexus. So the lymph from the breast drains into the following lymph nodes and the lymph plexus. As you guys could see, the 95% of the lymph from the breast drains into the axillary lymph nodes and further subdivisions and also the anterior thoracic or the parasternal lymph nodes. 5% of the lymph from the breast drains into these three lymph nodes and these two lymph plexuses. So this was all about the lymph nodes into which the lymph from the breast drains. Now let us see the lymphatic vessels which connect these lymph nodes. So, the lymphatic vessels are of two types, the superficial lymphatics and the deep lymphatics. The superficial lymphatics drain skin over the breast with the exception of nipple and the areola. The nipple and the areola are drained by the deep lymphatics of the breast. Finally, the superficial lymphatics passes the lymph radially to the axillary, the anterior thoracic or the parasternal, the cephalic and the supraclavicular nodes. The deep lymphatics drains parenchyma of the breast. It also drains the nipple and areola. And just like the superficial lymphatics, it also passes the lymph radially to the axillary, anterior thoracic, cephalic and the supraclavicular nodes. The obstruction of the superficial lymphatics of the breast may cause edema over the breast and orange-like appearance known as the pure D orange appearance. It is caused due to obstruction of the superficial lymphatics. This was all about the lymphatic vessels of the lymphatic drainage of the breast. Now let us talk about the further interesting points. Now here you guys could see the 75% of the lymph from the breast drains into the axillary lymph nodes. 20% of the lymph drains into the anterior thoracic or the parasternal lymph nodes. And finally nearly 5% drains into the posterior intercostal lymph nodes. Now let us talk about the axillary lymph node drainage. As you guys could see, out of this 75%, maximum amount of lymph drains into the anterior group. This is because of the presence of sub plexus of sape. 
in the deep to the areola part of the breast there is a presence of plexus of lymph vessels which is known as the sub areola plexus of sape this sub areola plexus of sape drains its lymphs directly into the anterior group of axillary lymph nodes as you guys could see this right here is the sub areola plexus of sape which drains directly into the anterior group of axillary lymph nodes this right here is the foramen of langer and this is the axillary trail of the spens because of the presence of the sub areolar plexus of sape maximum amount of lymph is received by the anterior group of lymph nodes some am some amount is also drained into the posterior and the apical lymph nodes directly now the anterior and the posterior group of lymph nodes drain their respective lymph into the central and the lateral group of lymph nodes and then the lymph from the central and the lateral group of lymph nodes drains into the apical lymph nodes indirectly this right here is the direct drainage and this is the indirect drainage to the apical lymph nodes and from the apical lymph nodes the lymph finally drains in the, into the supraclavicular nodes and then it is drained into the veins now let's visualize this flow chart with the help of a diagram a large portion of lymph from the breast drains into the anterior posterior and the apical group of lymph nodes this is right here directly and now from the anterior and the posterior groups the lymph travels to the central and the lateral group of lymph nodes and finally the lateral and the central group of lymph nodes drains their lymph into the apical and finally the apical drains into the supraclavicular lymph nodes these arrow represents the drainage system of the lymph from the breast that we have already discussed the anterior thoracic or the parasternal lymph nodes drains the inner and the outer half of the breast these arrow represent the drainage of the lymph from the breast to the internal mammary the parasternal on the anterior group of anterior thoracic group of lymph nodes this is the direct drainage from the inner and the outer half of the breast and finally 5% of the lymph of the breast drains into the posterior intercostal group of lymph nodes now let us talk about two more important points and those are the anterior and the central group of lymph nodes are commonly involved in the carcinoma of the breast this is very important the anterior and the central groups are associated with the carcinoma of the breast finally lymphatics from the lower and the inner quadrants of the breast may communicate with the subdiaphragmatic and the subperitoneal lymph plexus after crossing the costal margin and piercing the anterior abdominal wall now let us talk about the lymphatic spread of the breast cancer as you guys could see in here the lymphatics of the breast are connected with those present in the abdomen and the pelvic region and because of this communication the cancer of the breast may spread to the liver and cancer cells may drop into the pelvis right here producing secondaries the breast cancer may even travel to the group of axillary lymph nodes right here and apart from the lymphatics that are shown he in here cancer may spread to the segmental veins since the veins draining the breast communicate with the vertebral venous plexus of veins through these communications cancer may spread to the vertebrae and to the brain as well so guys this was all about the lymphatic drainage of the breast if you found this video interesting please do like and please do subscribe my channel signing off love for anatomy